Tennessee Titans at the New England. You got to check and see what the next game is. No, no. I just pull up. I like to pull up both teams full season schedules before I start talking about them just because I have points and notes here that I want to make sure I hit and I just games look good. But it's the Titans at the Patriots, the Terminators, as Mike Florio has called the Patriots all week. They'll be back. The, the Patriots are favored by five and a half. The over under at 44 and a half. Uh, I, I'm, I'm truly like so psyched for this game. I think this is going to be awesome. Uh, there's a lot of great storylines. I mean, starting off with, of course, it's New England playing in the wild card. Geez, Brady, you know, could this be his last game in New England? You know, that talk can start. I don't think so. Any of that. Mike Vrabel, Tannehill coming into town. They've been on fire. Mike, lead us off. What do you think goes down here? Well, I I, uh, I fear the Terminator, as we always should, because the Terminator isn't dead until it is truly and completely and decisively dead. And I think the Patriots want us to believe it's over. I think they thrive in these settings of single elimination. I am nervous about that belief, though, because I I am convinced that Mike Vrabel, the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, is is well aware of how to go about getting inside the mind of Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and confusing and confounding, and we've seen that with some of the former Belichick assistants who, like Brian Flores this past weekend, it was essentially a playoff game for the Patriots. Win and you avoid the wild card round altogether, yeah. and they found a way to lose the game. But the moment, the magnitude, the fact that Tom Brady knows that each of these games is quite possibly the last game he'll play in New England or ever, depending upon what he decides to do next year, it's just one of those where they're begging us to pick against them and if I'm going to be wrong, I'm going to be wrong because I believed in the Terminator and I believe that the Patriots aren't dead until, you know, you do the thing here where you check the pulse and you really make sure you put a you put a mirror over the mouth. Uh, and even then, even then. There's a chance the body's going to pop up out of the casket. I think you got to shove it straight into the, into the what is that thing, furnace and cremate it. And even then, there's a chance the ashes come back together. This is all very morbid. Very. But I'm not, I can't and I won't. We, they get the point. I can't and I won't pick against the New England Patriots. And I kind of hope they do lose so I don't go through this again next week when they would be playing the Chiefs and I'll be saying the same damn thing. But I can't pick against the Patriots. I cannot do it. It's a trap, and I'm not stepping into it. All right. So what's your score then? Just get it out of the way. Tell me the damn score then. Well, I am. I'm going. I'm going a little mixed bag here. I'm doing the Chris Sims needle thread. Although it's not a tiny little needle, but it's not like a 13 point. It's five and a half points. I think it's 23-20 Patriots. Late field goal by who's the who's even their kicker now? Steve Mickemeyer? I think it's Nick Folk still, right? He's yes. been gone. He's back. Yeah. I think it's going to be a late field goal to win the game for the New England Patriots. They advance past the Titans. The Titans give them everything they can handle, but these are the Patriots, and I think Bill Belichick always holds back a few tricks or come up, comes up with a few new ones. I think the Patriots advance to the next round, and they win the game at home against the Tennessee Titans. All right. Well... This is um, there's so many things to unpack here. I guess you know the first thing we go to the Patriots offense versus the Tennessee Titans defense. Titans defense, you know their biggest issue hands down is been stopping the pass game all year long. You know they just they play a little too aggressive at times. Sometimes they just have mix ups in general that aren't good. But that's really been the overall you know overarching issue. Well, okay, you know, New England, you know, who who do they have that's really going to, we're going to sit here and just go, oh my gosh, they're going to torch this Titan secondary that's, you know, towards the bottom of football and passing. You know, who? Tom Brady. Well, yes, they got Tom Brady. I get that. But even the great Tom Brady needs some help. And yes, they got Julian Edelman. I understand that. But then you talked about like Vrabel knowing the tricks and the things that New England does. See, this is to me where, you know, the ex-coaches get a little bit of a one leg up on most normal coaches against Bill Belichick 
because they understand formations, situations, when they want to feed Edelman the ball in a certain formation or when they want to call a screen down and distance wise. You know, New England always had these like what they would call G-bot plays, get back on track, right? If they had like a, a first down sack and now it's second down and 18, they had a list of G-bot plays, which were get back on track so they can get into third and seven or third and six or third and five. You know, those are the little things I've just the nuances. Dean Pease and Mike Vrabel will be all over. Let alone, you know, listen, I, I, I think Nkeel Harry is coming along, but like who else is going to take advantage of the Titans and their pass defense? And really the New England Patriots want to run the football. The Titans have big people. And the Titans, as, as even, even with the Patriots O-line, it's been better lately. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if I can just sit here and go, oh, they're going to dominate the Titans in the run game. I certainly don't think that. So I think that's interesting. You know, and then the flip side, it, the flip side, you know, Tannehill, A.J. Brown, I think we both agree it's the hottest combo in the sport. You know, we've also seen that if you have an offensive line that's big and overpowering, the Tennessee Titans got that with the running back, that puts New England in a bind. You know, you look at their losses, and that's kind of some of the things, other than the Dolphins game last week, that's one of the things that was an issue for them. Uh, you know, Houston was patient with the run. And it led to favorable passing thing, passing situations. You know, even the Kansas City Chiefs, they didn't just air it out every play. Uh, but I, I just look at that and go, ooh, that's going to be tough for, for the New England defense. I really think for New England to win this football game, one thing they got to do, uh, and you heard me say this already, it can't be Stephon Gilmore against A.J. Brown. It just can't be. Because there's nothing that's going to scare the Tennessee Titans away from that matchup. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to sit there and watch the game last week and go, well, Fitzpatrick and Devontae Parker did this. Well, we should be scared of Stephon Gilmore and not do that. Tannehill's going to go, hey, I'm better than Ryan Fitzpatrick. And the coach is going to go, yes, you are, marketably. And A.J. Brown's going to go, I'm every bit as good as Devontae Parker, if not better. And the coach is going to go, yes, you are. So to me, that will be something New England has to do. You have to almost show the double pre-snap on certain plays, I think. So Tannehill just knows, like, oh, I can't feed him because I don't think that anything's going to scare him away from A.J. Brown. I mean, if I'm New England, I'm going somebody else – on the Tennessee wide receiving core beat me other than A.J. Brown. And I'll be interested to see what they do there. I think that really will be a key for me. But I, I think the Titans are, are the better team. I, that's where I just come down to this. The New England mystique is scary. All the things you said are scary. But when I go through it position for position again, the only position group I give New England the advantage in is secondary, right? Am I missing one? I mean – I'm, I'm not trying to be like Johnny Know-It-All, but that's the only clear-cut position I can look at and go, New England's right there. They're better. Okay, I mean, I don't disagree with anything you're okay, saying. No, I know. But I just... it's the playoffs. If this is a regular season game, fine. You take the Titans and uh, you, you shoot your shot and they have a good chance of winning and off we go. Yeah. But – but, but, but you know what the narrative is with the Titans? When they are the better team, what do they tend to do? They lose. Yeah. They lose when they're the better team. Right. So I, I just – I cannot and will not. I refuse to. I would rather be wrong 100 out of 100 times taking the Patriots than, than being wrong once taking – than being right once taking – I don't, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. All I right. don't want to be wrong – Picking against the Patriots. I hear That's you. My point. I, I don't want to be wrong there. picking somebody just because of mystique and like other stuff. And that's why I'm I'd going... rather be wrong for that. Okay. I'd rather be wrong by 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 giving the appropriate credence to what we have seen happen right. time and time and time again. Yep. I have learned from my mistakes. And I'm not going to get caught up in this, well, this matchup is better than that, and this team's better than that, and this guy's better than this guy. It doesn't matter when you're in a single elim elimination setting. Right. I'll take Tom Brady over Ryan Tannehill any day of the week. I don't care that Ryan Tannehill was 117.5 in passer rating this year. We haven't seen him ever 
in a playoff game. And Tom Brady has probably started more playoff games in his career than Ryan Tannehill has started regular season games in the past four years combined. Yeah, I don't know. That's probably close. I get you. I get you. But I'm just not going to fall into the trap. I'm taking the Tennessee Titans to win this game 24 21. And the Tennessee There's Titans. two different traps. Yeah. We are fearing two yeah, different I'm, traps. You're, you're fearing two decades of stuff. I'm just going with what I've seen over the last month, and I've seen New England play average football. You know, it was a must win game last what about week. Brady the Bills? versus Patrick. What about against the Bills? Okay, it was good. I mean, well, I'm not ready to crown the Bills the champs, all right? The Tennessee Titans, though, you're saying, too, is they play down to their competition or don't beat the teams they should be. That's not true with Ryan Tannehill. Their losses are on a crazy game against the Houston Texans, and they were it was there to be had if a receiver doesn't fumble against the New Orleans Saints. It's a different team this time around. So I'm going with the, the Tennessee Titans, 24-21. It's hard to do, but I'm doing it. Well... I'm glad. I'm Good. glad you are. Yes, I am. Because we will we will on Monday morning, uh, and I think I will be with you on Monday morning. You will hear it from me. Yep, don't repeatedly. you worry. You'll hear it from me as well. I'm Pete Dimalitalitis. You got to turn up the volume. I can't hear anything you're sa hearing saying right now. I can't hear you. You just uh, sound like you're muffling stuff into my ears. Okay. I think. Yep. Uh, so, and to, to your point, Tannehill, 50 starts over the last four seasons, Brady, 40 career playoff starts. So it's close. Nonetheless, your point was very well taken. We and get Tannehill, it. zero career playoff starts. Yeah. Zero. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.